All right, bro. All right, man. We about to we about to get set up right quick. I got my banner up right quick so that uh we can All get right. into this uh into this interview right quick, man. Where you where, where you you say you on a bus? You you on a bus yeah. like like public transportation or something like that? No, I'm on the Greyhound. I'm actually at an orientation. For oh, you go. Oh, you I'm going to orientation? Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So this uh this this is a perfect time. All right. Yo, what's yeah. up, everybody? Lockout men podcast for you. I'm in the truck. I'm back at it. Yo. I'm back at it with another podcast interview for you guys. This young man right here saw Paris Yo. the Empress video. And um, from there, I jumped onto his uh, YouTube right quick. And uh, on his YouTube, man, this 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 would um hold on right quick. This this what popped up on his uh on his YouTube. Let me see. Let me make sure I got the oops, that's the wrong one. Hold on right quick. Hold on. You got to make sure I got the I got the right one up here. That looks like a Okay. That's Damn it, man. Hold on. I got to maybe I got to shut it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it popped it popped up. All right. So as I was saying, my my bad guys, you know, my bad. This this is the uh this I I got two uh browsers for my uh my OBS. I got a I got one browser as a backup and then I got the main browser which is the Google. But this is what I found, man. This um this young man right here, his name is Karaji. Let's see what he has to say about these uh, shady recruiters out here. I'm going to go with PTL, Man. but I'm totally about to call them out right now. Not necessarily them, but a specific recruiter. Um, she basically, I basically told her what my situation was because at this point, I ordered my DAC report because I kept on getting rejected applications and I'm like, well, what's on my DAC? And it turns out Maverick put down four backing accidents and I'm like, oh shit, how the fuck is this gonna happen? You know, the forums, Trucking Truth, Truckers Report, they're all basically saying that my situation is hopeless and that I need to give up a career in trucking. You know, those fucking piss ants are always mad about something and, you know, and like to cloak it under the guise of being realistic. However, there are people who have worse records than I do and, you know, are possibly felons who are able to get a job in truck. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he tried to get at uh, PTL, and they, uh, they, they, uh, lightweight did him wrong, did him wrong. So let's it's welcome, crazy. let's welcome Karaji to the show. Yo, what's, going what's going on, Karaji? I'm pretty good, man. Uh, traveling right now. You know, see my future. Hopefully, everything goes well. Um, but yeah, man, I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. So I, I see you. Uh, you cool with uh, Paris, the Empress, and that's how I came yeah. across the uh, came across your video. Uh, for those that Paris don't know about you, for those that don't know about you, man, let let my uh, let my viewers know who you is and where you from, bro. Okay. Uh, thank you so uh, some people call me Corey if they don't even well, but um, I'm born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I got into trucking uh, back in 2018. I was looking at a whole bunch of companies, and then you know I just wanted to have a free Hold hold up hold hold, hold 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 up right yeah. quick. Hold up. I I know you got you yeah. you you got your Bluetooth on. Um, I have my headphones in right now. Can you hear me? Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a little bit of feedback going on. So you might want to just talk directly into the phone. Okay. Hold on. All right. Can you hear me now? There you go. That's much better. Much, much better. All right. Start okay, over, perfect. start over again, because <laughs> I, I know if I didn't hear you, then I know my, I'm a, I know my viewers didn't hear you. So start over again. So where are you from now? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, born and raised, and um, I got into trucking through Prime Inc. I actually, they were actually a company among with other companies that I was looking at, and, you know, that ended up being the one that I ended up going with because, you know, it was the shiniest, so to speak. It seemed like the coolest one to go to. It seemed like the most practical one. It seemed like the one that was paying the most at the time for new drivers. 
Mm-hmm. So I decided to go with that. And um, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned Paris earlier because me and her are actually in the same orientation class. That's how we met. Okay, okay, that's what's up. Yeah, that's what's yeah, up. yeah. All right, hold on for a second. I gotta, I gotta do something right quick. Let me. Okay. Let me. Uh, and, let me. And actually, uh, do you do you mind if I connect uh to my blue parrot so I can I can still be wireless, but so you'll probably hear me better. Well, no, I can I can hear you. I can hear you much better now. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you much better now. That's why sometimes it's it's just better to not be on uh not be on the Any Bluetooth. Sort of headset. Yeah. yeah, it's not better to be on the headset because I can hear you. I can hear you, but okay. it's like a little it's like a little faint feedback that's drawing out the that's drawing out the sound. So all right, so oh. you said uh so you said you uh you 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 went to you you started out at Prime. What what was your experience with them uh going through Prime? You you now let me ask you this. You went to yes. Prime, you went to Prime to get your license? I or, did, yes. I oh, did. Okay, so did so what was your experience with Prime and what was the uh what was the end result of that? Okay, so Prime started off pretty cool. You know, it's my first second company, so it's basically like the shiny new object that is so intimidating to touch. And um, I basically just got my studio through them. I went to their studio school. You know, I signed that dreaded contract that these truck companies make you sign Mm -hmm. in order to, like, you know, get a studio. And um, I started off doing, you know, the Reaper thing. I I did the whole PSC phase. They have you get your studio with the trainer then i did the tnt phase now this is where things get interesting because it was a tnt phase it started off okay you know you're just on the truck with a trainer back then it was thirty thousand miles which a place to like two to three months depending on how you run and um at first it was cool you know i was just driving forward everywhere but then i felt like i wasn't getting trained properly because for the life of me this you know, the person that I was with wouldn't teach me backing. Like, that was, like, the main, you know, when you were in a truck, that's, mm-hmm. like, what you do 80% of the time. Right. So, especially during reaper and drive in. So, he would just, like, you know, make me get up and then do the backing for me. And then eventually around, you know, the third or fourth week, I was like, okay, so when are we going to do the backing? He's like, oh, no, it's easy. You know, we'll just put that towards the end of your training. The end of my training, I think I did backing, like, maybe three times out of the 30,000 miles. Uh, three months that I was with him and that and you know the dude was always sleeping in the back while I was um, you know <clears throat> doing his driving so you know there would be some mistakes that would end up at critical events and, you know and it ended up getting to a point where I got uh, too many of those to where they were like okay either you can quit Prime Inc or you can do 30,000 more miles alright alright well, let, let, yeah. let me let me stop you right there let me stop you right there you said okay. you you okay. say you with uh, you, you with this trainer that yeah. Was sleep half the time while you was driving? Yeah, okay. So, like, the first few days, he was up with me. But then, you know, he was like, okay, I'm confident that, that, you, that, you, that you got it. You know what you're doing. So, I'm going to be back here asleep. And if you need me, just wake me up. It was that kind of thing. But it was still it was still more so like a team driving uh, setup more than it was a training setup, in now, my opinion. But that's kind of, yeah. Now, I understand I understand team driving, but but still, you're, you're a new jack. You, the, the, yeah. the trainer should be up with you, man. You're like the you're you're like the third or fir- or fourth person that that says that you know that some of the prime trainers as much as as yeah. much as prime trying to be this premier uh, trucking company for new jacks, it just seems as yeah. though that they have some of the worst trainers there, man. Oh, I can agree. I can't speak for everybody's training, but like I know for me, it wasn't terrible. The dude was cool. It was just like some key points I wasn't really getting enough work in. You know, it was just like it was. It was sort of like the other party didn't really want to do it. It's just like okay, well, I mean, I shoot, I don't even know how to back like that for real. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, bruh, you told me you've been in this business for ten years. You don't know how to back for real. What are you talking about? So it was. It just ended up being stuff like that, and I just that that uh, coupled with you know the critical events that I was getting and what you know the, the support that. What was the critical event? What what happened? Um, let's see. Critical events. I know one of them was you know I was going too fast around an exit, and it kind of it kind of dinged. It kind of went off, 
And then sometimes it would go off if I would go under a bridge. You know, it would think that I was about to hit it, <laughs> even though it was like a bridge. Mm-hmm. So, like, it was stuff like that. So, but, you know, it was it was enough to the, huh? So, prime, so, so the prime, the prime heads over there just said because you was, I mean, you were a new jack. You you trying to get used to the truck. They they couldn't they couldn't yeah. overlook that. Yeah, I mean, I wish they would have. We, uh, you know what I'm saying. But it was just like, it, it was to the point where you know they 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 just felt like I wouldn't have been a safe enough driver to be out on my own yet. Which I understand, but it's just like, you know, I kind of felt like I was done a little wrong because at the end of the day, if if the training was a little bit more Better. structured yeah. and if it had more of a curriculum to it, then I feel like I would have gotten more done. I would have learned a lot more. And I, a lot, not as much time would have been wasted. I tend to agree with you on that. So was you so you so you actually made it all the way through the, the school portion to get your license. So you got so I you did. got your CDLs through Prime. Yeah. Yes. All right, so when yeah. Prime when when Prime asked you to leave, which they asked you to mm-hmm. leave, of course I'm assuming you had to sign a sign a uh uh You re- know what's so funny? Mm-hmm. I didn't have to sign anything. I was literally on home time because the way it was set up, I was with the lease operator, and you know, due to something that happened, he had to go home a little bit more often than usual. So I, I remember just being home like at the end of every week, which I guess it was cool for me back then because I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get this my family every week. But you know, looking back on it, it didn't really benefit me too much when it came nah, to the it training. Didn't, it because, didn't benefit you, know, you as far as the training goes because you, yeah, you you, you learned something new and you trying to get into it, but then you had to stop. Exactly. You had to stop, and all that, all that fresh information in your head sort of, sort of went down the drain a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, w- went down the drain, and I, you know, I won't even lie. I did get too comfortable with with the routine of being home more often, and not even gonna lie. Like just to be fair, the dude asked me like, "Yo, so do you want to still stay with me? Do you want another trainer? Because you know this happened, and I got to be home." Uh, every you know next week at least because this happened I got to take care of this so I'm not even gonna lie I decided to stay with him because it was what I was used to I was like okay well I don't really want to have to get to know somebody else somebody new da 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 I'm, I'm used to how you train so you, you said you were gonna teach me this so let's just stick it out but you know looking back on it I probably should have you know went the other way because I probably would you know have learned something you learned to, more than I right, did right yeah. So with uh, so with that said, uh, Prime asked you to ask you to leave, and you left. Uh, did you mm-hmm. did did are are they coming after you for the uh for the for the uh CDL amount for their money? Yes. Yeah, they, they're sending they're sending me um they're sending me bills, and I actually uh I actually did send them a hundred dollars just to kind of keep them off my back, and so they don't just so that they don't hit my credit. Mm-hmm. But that was only one. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I haven't heard anything about any credit collectors hit my phone up or whatever, nothing like that. So it hasn't gone that far. Nah, but, you, um, you need to check you need to check your credit report all the time, man, because you know, even though they okay. even though they might say they're not doing nothing, they they mm-hmm. are doing something. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. you, you say you was in the uh same class as uh as uh Paris, right? Yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, okay, so y'all so so the end result of everybody that was there because she told me that it was like a gang of people that signed up, but it was only like, Mm -hmm. there was only like 30 that made it through. So you're, you was part of the 30. Uh, Yeah, I was, I was part of the dirty 30. I was part of the people that made it past the PSD phase and all that Mm -hmm. stuff. So yeah. Uh, Yeah. All right. So with prime, man, you, uh, (laughs) so prime, Un- unfortunately you didn't make it through but you know you you at least got your license uh what was yeah. the uh what was the process of going to uh before you was before you got your license what was the uh what was the process of you going through prime to getting your license like uh why was prime your your first stop as far as getting your license goes Okay, well, okay, it's an interesting story because my first stop was actually going to be um, Atlanta's local transportation system called MARTA. I was going to become a bus driver from there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I had a, I had applied for my CDLB, my Class B license, and then I had a talk with my dad, and he was like, well, why don't you just go all the way, dude? Like, you can make more money getting a Class A, you might as well just go all the way, you know, get some over-the-road train, da-da-da. You know, so I, 
kind of went with that advice instead. So I was looking at a few companies. I was looking at Schneider. I was looking at Werner. I was looking at um, she was the other one. I mean, it was just, it was just a bunch of companies. You know, like the you know the megas that everybody hears about that you see on the road all the time. I was looking at all of those, JB Hunt, all of them. Right. So the reason I went with Prime is because you know all the other companies at the, at the time were paying like you know, less than 40 cents a mile. They're paying like 38 cents a mile, 34 cents a mile. And me back then, I'm like, well, shit, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to get all the money I can. Not really knowing the, what that truly meant, you know, and that the fact that at the end of the day, it still wasn't like a shit ton of money. But for like a new driver, you're like, ooh, 42 cents a mile? Shit, I can do this with that money. I can do that with that money. So I just saw the money and I saw, you know, I did a lot of research on YouTube. I watched a lot of Prime Inc. videos. Shout out to, um, it's, it's, it's Junior. Like this lesbian couple that, yeah, okay, Junior. I saw Junior Hunter. I saw uh, LaShawn Park, Tucker Brown, um, Izzy Blake is another one. Uh, there was, uh, it, it's just like this couple. I forget their name. Damn it. It, it, it escapes Ma- me. But it's, it was like this. Le- married to the Miles a- or something like that? No, no, not Married to the Miles. It's, it's, it's the lesbian couple. It's, it's, it's oh, the Nick and girl. Carla. Oh, wait, no, no. Yes, you said Nick the white. Carla. Wait, wait, wait. You said the black and the white girl. That's. Uh, no, 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 the two black girls. Oh, the two, the two black, black okay, girls. Nick and Carla, Nick yeah, and Carla. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but there was, so was like, there was a, there, huh? there was another lesbian couple that, uh, that rocked it out with Prime, too, or I think that was Prime, but I might be mistaken because a few videos that I've seen of them in the past, they was, they mm-hmm. was working for U.S. Express. I'm not sure if they still, mm-hmm. uh, working for U.S. Express now. I know one of, I, I know one of them has um has like a alternative channel because she's she speaks uh she speaks Haitian and she got a, oh, that's dope. she got she got a gang of subscribers that that you know by her um speaking Haitian. Let me see if I can hold on right quick. Let me let me see if I can uh, oh. let me see if I can find her. Uh Okay. <laughs> hold on right quick. I I think I can find her through her her girlfriend uh channel let me see if this all right so i found her let me see if this her nah nah that's not that's not her uh let's type this in and see if i can bring it up that way whoops yep all right so this this is uh hold on right quick let me go to all right, so this is her right here, Kayla. Uh, okay. And this is her. Hey, KT fam. I'm back with another video, and we're finally getting our truck today. <laughs> so let's fast. Man, I'm looking over there because they was looking at me like I'm crazy. Forward. All right, so yeah, these two right here. So, okay, okay. Yeah, they uh, yeah, they they another one. So I believe that um, I believe that they uh, they they work for different companies now. But before, oh, I could have sworn like both, I could have sworn. Separate companies? Yeah, I think they work for separate companies now. I think the oh, I think okay. the white chick she works for U.S. Foods, and I think uh, Eliante that's her name, Eliante her um. She, yeah, she works for a, a local company too, so I'm I'm not sure, but Eliante, you know, she got like over a hundred thousand subscribers because you know she Dang. she speak yeah she speak Haitian and yeah she uh she's uh she's fire man so um all right so so again with uh with Prime man you uh you you made it through Prime all right so. After Prime, where yeah. where did you go? Where did you go to next after Prime? After Prime, um, I took about a month break with for other truck companies. You know, uh, there were a lot that were that I could choose from. You know, I didn't have any bad uh, bad rap with Prime at all. So I worked a little regular job for a little bit, and then I went to Maverick Transportation, where I haul glass. Okay, okay. Now with Maverick, man, this and with Maverick. That's where I came across uh came across your video that you was uh yeah that you was uh talking about uh Maverick. So yeah. What uh 
let, let me uh, truck, let me you know, go back to it a little his bit. His aunts are always let mad about something, and, bit. you know, and like to cloak it under the guise of being realistic. However, there are people who have worse records than I do, and you know, are possibly felons who are able to get a job in trucking. So I wasn't gonna t- really take no for an answer, but anyway, um, I was working with this recruiter at this company called Pesca. All right, so before we so before we get into before we get into that, um, yeah. what, what was your experience with uh, Maverick though? Before we get into uh, before we get into the video that caught my eye. Okay, yeah. Um, well, Maverick was actually a decent company. They had like a family oriented vibe, so everybody was pretty cool with each other. If we saw each other on the highway, we would kind of give each other a two or a wave. Um, it was really like the, the community be- uh, the community between the drivers was excellent. Like, you know, the pay was good for, you know, a beginning driver for two drivers, like at 53 cents a mile. What was, um, what was the pay? Like, what, what was the pay for a new jack there? Because did you uh, still have to, well, hold on. Did you, you, you didn't come into Maverick as a, as an experience, as an experienced driver, did you? Because you still, no, had, no. you still had to go through Maverick's training course as far as securing me. Uh, I did. I sure did. Yep. Mm-hmm. I sure far, did. I and, did there. Um, and from what uh, I, and from what I hear, Maverick got one of the best securement training facilities. I can attest to that. I really can. Their security training program is actually, I, I, I don't really have any other reference to go off of because I only did Maverick, but from what I experienced, like, I felt hella comfortable once I was done because they explain shit so well there and, like, they make you familiar, they make you familiarize yourself with, like, a certain way to do things. Like, you know, they call it the Maverick way. And it's, you know, I'm mm-hmm. sitting here at, you know, being a damn spokesperson. I don't even work there no more, but, like, it was, it was a good program. Like, you know, like they, they taught you how to secure steel coils and lumber. And, you know, when I was doing the glass security training, they made things very easy and very, like, by the book. They, they have a structure. They had the structure that I wish Prime had when it came to the training program because I, I felt like something taken care of. And I felt like I was well versed by the time I got out with a trainer. So, yeah, they have a, they have an excellent um, training program. Especially security training. Yeah. All right. So, what made you what, what made you go flatbed? What, what was the what was the reason? What, what Man, made you go flatbed? Listen, I want to ask June twenty nineteen Corey the same damn thing. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know. I didn't know. I just saw that shiny ass piece of mine. I'm like, ooh, it's gonna be cool too. I don't mind doing a little work. But you know, it was just like. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. It was something new. It was something I haven't done before. It was like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, bro, I didn't do this all the way. Like, let me just try it out. Like, it you is. know, what the hell? Why not? You know, and it's glass. You know, it ain't flat bed, flat bed. It's, but according to, of course, my YouTube university research, it wasn't as intense as like a flat bed job would be where, you do, where you're hauling all types of uh, products. It was mm-hmm. just hauling glass. Thing. So that, that appealed to me too because it was just, you know, and uh, monotonous, Type of uh, type of work, right? So with the gla- uh, well before, yeah. So with the glass division there, what what was the pay on the glass division? Uh, fifty three cents a mile. Oh, fifty three cents a mile. Yeah, yeah. Now was you was you was- getting was you getting that while you was training? Um, when I was training, I think it was six hundred a week is, is what they give you oh, while okay. you're training. Yeah. And then afterwards, it was fifty three cent. Uh, fifty yeah. percent a mile. So, what was your um, not going into you know not being nosy or anything like that, but what was your average right. pay after you got after you got finished training? What was your average pay with uh fifty three cent a mile, and how many miles you was hitting with Maverick? Uh, I was hitting about two thousand, and I'll just go ahead and say that they also had a thousand uh, dollar week minimum guaranteed pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if 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 the miles wasn't hitting like that, if you if you were out by Monday at ten a.m. every week, you know you basically had it in the bag. So I would just say like a thousand a week before taxes is what, is what you would come to expect with Maverick. Of course, you know after taxes, depending on your state, you ain't getting that whole thousand. But it was it was you know it was pretty decent. It was good, especially you know if if, if you were like me and just kind of like put your whole life on a truck and didn't have a place you were paying for back at home. It, it was it was good. Now with that with that said, you know, a lot of a lot of these new jacks out here, they see yeah. they they see the 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 amount 
you know, like 45 yeah. cent a mile, 50 cent a mile. Yeah. But, you know, you got to you got to understand you you're not going to hit that with the miles because sometimes you can get you can get the pay without the miles. But then you can get the miles without the pay. You see what I'm saying? I see exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So with uh, so with Maverick, what happened? Mm-hmm. What happened with Maverick? You mean you mean why did I leave? Yeah. Well, what, what happened? Because uh, in in your video, you you mentioned that you had some issues with Maverick, and that was the reason why you couldn't come on with uh, the next company I'm about to mention. Word. Okay. So with Maverick, that was my really my true first company. I feel like yeah, I got my CDL with Prime, but with Maverick, that was like you know my first real solo job. And I ended up doing, I ended up being way over my head. I'm going to go ahead. And, I, was, I, I was, I was like barely ready for what I was getting myself into. It was basically a flatbed position, a specialized flatbed because you're mainly hauling glass. But even still, like I would go into Canada sometimes and just take regular flatbed loads. So, you know, I just, it was just, it was just the workload and, you know, what it does to your body and how tiring it was and how much, I could barely goddamn move my knees because of all this work that I was doing. Like, you know, what I mean, call me lazy, call me inadequate, call me unfit. I don't give a damn. That shit was not for me at all. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I would try to get used to it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and then when, them, when them checks were looking real nice, I was like, shit, you know, I, I, I'll walk with a limp. It's cool. That's cool. I'm cool with that. But, you know, after a while, it just got to the point where I couldn't lie to myself anymore. And then, you know, things kept on happening. Uh, like, you know, so, so sometimes when you're very, very tired and you're dealing with a flatbed job or any trucking job, but especially flat, flatbed, you seem to, your your recall for error, it diminishes. You're not as good as checking yourself. So um, that, that'll segue into partially why I left was because I kept getting into basket accidents. Like, um, I had a total of four backing accidents, and I can go ahead and say that, like, with confidence, because, hell, it's already on my YouTube video. Y'all go check that out, this video. And um, that was, you know, the whole get out and look thing that I wasn't doing. Now, what I will say about them is they do have, like, a good uh, safety program or safety department as far as, like, you know, taking care of their drivers, because, uh, you know, there were times where they they would have, like, somebody call me, and then there was even one time where I had a safety training where they just kind of, like, watched me back on the yard and I did pretty good. But at the end of the day, if, if something's not for you and if something's beating you up, it's, it's nothing like, you know, trying to back a flatbed truck and, you know, getting out and look and then fucking up anyway. Like, <laughs> that, that shit does happen. So, it, for me, it was just like, okay, well, but before I keep on, you know, fucking myself over and then see, and, and, and ending up getting terminated, I need to just go ahead and quit because I don't see this ending well. And funny enough, like around that same time, I called my fleet manager. I was like, yo, I don't think this is for me. He's like, okay, cool. Well, let's just, you know, just take down the A-frames, which is like these heavy ass, 250 pound triangular things that the glass sits on. Uh, basically, every time we get a flatbed load, we have to, we have to put those up and take those down. It's a lot of fucking work. And if you don't have like the like like one of those expensive Home Depot drills that can like undrill a skyscraper, mm-hmm. you, you're gonna have to do that shit the old school way, and, it, and that shit is crazy. So, uh, in the middle of me doing that, uh, the top part, portion of this big ass 250 pound um, A frame falls off and drops on my head. But the lucky thing is, I had oh, what's man. called you know PPE. I had my PPE on. Like I, I was oh, playing okay, okay, okay. all my okay. Yeah. Yeah, I safety ain't, first, ain't, bro. Yeah. Safety first. Bro, bro, for definitely. real, yes. Yeah, I just thought about the That's why. As soon as it almost knocked me out, I was like, yo, if this, if this shit wasn't on my head, I would be dead right now. Because that shit was heavy, dude. You Man. know, and it went straight to my cranium. Well, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you're. I'm. I'm glad you had your PPE more. I mean, your PPE on, Me man, too. because you know I'm. Yeah. I'm glad that you had that because safety is always first, and I always say that flatbed. Big time. Flatbed is not a. It, flatbed is not an old man game. It, flatbed is a young man game. How old are you, bro? I'm 27. So that 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 that's a that's a situational thing you just said there. Because I'm 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 a young man, but that but that that's not my game. No, sir. <laughs> you said that's <laughs> listen i was i was uh i was 44 45 when i came into the game and 
and uh, oh, Maverick man. was one of the companies that I was vetting back in the day when I was coming into the game. But like I said, flatbed wasn't for me. I, I'm I'm not I'm yeah, I'm not that. I'm not a flatbedder. I, you know, when they was telling me that I had to get out in the in the dead of winter to tarp, and mm. I had to get out in a in the hot of summer to tarp and fold up and yeah. get, climb that up, climb down, hell. get up, get down, and all like that. I, oh, I like to exercise. Don't get me wrong. I, I like to exercise. If you if you a big guy like me, touching about you know touching about two fifty, two forty five, two fifty, two sixty. And you get in the flatbed, yeah. and you do flatbed for about a couple of months. Trust me, you're gonna be down to about two thirty. <laughs> yeah, for real. It was, it was so funny. I, I mean, I, I got a little extra weight when I was at Prime, but you know, it's just the whole time. But when I was in Maverick, and it was oh, listen, we went to Texas all the time. Imagine doing all that shit in like a hundred degree weather. Like I could have modeled for somebody by the time I left. <laughs> it was so much aerobic exercise just from you know what i get paid to do pretty much so you say you was uh you say you was getting so much exercise that you was about to be a uh you about to be a calvin klein model huh man if if, if i would have stayed shit probably <laughs> but you know <laughs> that cis pack was j- that cis pack was coming huh <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's it's, it's still it's still got lost in the mail Right, right. Don't get it wrong, but like, yeah. All right, so you, <laughs> yeah. So you left, uh, you you left Maverick on your own, or did they actually bring you in I left, to I let left, you go? I left Maverick on my own. Oh, I did. okay, okay. It's, it's crazy, yeah. All right, I so left let's, on my own time. so let's get to the elephant in the room, man. Let's get to that elephant oh, right okay. quick, man. So you, oh, uh. So you you at home? You you chilling? You doing Uber? You doing um? Uh, you doing uh you know uh uh the, you you trying to survive while you out here you you did mention yeah uh you did mention uber right quick now i used to be an uber driver myself back in the day i did uh yeah. I, I did the uh inaugural uh ubering when it first came to cleveland uh back uh, oh, about okay. four, uh, six years ago i think it came to cleveland and in 2014, 20 because I got mm-hmm. into truck driving 2015, and I was Ubering. Okay. I was yeah. Ubering in 2014. Now, in the beginning, yeah. in the beginning of my Uber career, it was it was great. I mean, you know, my I did uh, I did the uh, airport runs, you know, from Cleveland, from downtown Cleveland to Cleveland Hopkins Airport across uh, across 480. Going ahead and yeah. taking, going ahead and taking that in effect, do about two, about two, maybe two, three, maybe about two, three, four rides. I'm already at a hundred. I mean, I'm already at four hundred dollars. I heard it was so good. Yeah, it I was do. so, I, it I was so that. gravy back then, bruh. But yeah. now, but now, you know, when they started chopping it's away, yeah, they they started chopping away at the money and. You know, it started getting saturated, and I was driving a pickup. You know, I was driving a Ford F one fifty at the time. So, you know, the the uh, the the gas and yeah, I was like, yo, I, I gotta stop. But then, you know, I came across some rude passengers, passengers thinking yeah. that I'm thinking that they're gonna get in my truck and put their feet up on my dashboard. I'm like, bro, you oh, like, hell man, no, on. that's crazy. Come on, enough of that. But uh you did that to survive a little bit. So you got a hold of uh you got a hold of partial truck lines, man. What was uh what was your experience? Uh what was your experience with them right quick? Let me let me uh before you answer that, let me go back to this uh let me go back to your video. Uh mm-hmm. wait, let me go back there we go. Let me let me uh, go back to your video where you was uh, talking about it. PTO. Okay. Um, for the sake of avoiding any litigation of any kind, I won't put their logo in this video. But you can look it up for yourself who PTL is. Um, basically, I had a recruiter basically um, say that I was qualified with my four backing accidents and one, my one personal vehicle accident that I uh, got into in 2018. And um, she was just very cool about it. And I'm just like, okay, so I guess I'm good. I guess I'm into, you know, the industry now, finally, after so many people saying no, finally someone gave me a chance. I was kind of excited, not fully excited, because I didn't know what to expect, and rightfully so, not all the way excited, because 
what happened next I basically get called into an office during orientation after signing a bunch of paperwork basically telling me how I don't qualify for the position and how they found all right so what happened you 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 get it you 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 talk to the recruiter how, how was how was the experience with the recruiter when he was actually talking to her and in the beginning it was good in the beginning it was pretty good um you know she here's the thing prior to ppl i applied with a bunch of different companies i went on zip recruiter and they ended up spamming my email and phone you know how they do mm -hmm. so i was applying to all these places to shoot my application all these places and I just wouldn't get any, you know, I, I just wouldn't get any, um, any by fact. So with this one company, I forget what, what company it was, but they were like, well, we can't take you because we got your DAC report back. Oh, it was with Swift. I was trying to get on with Swift. And they told me that when they got my DAC report back, they told me what was on it. And I'm like, oh, wow. Four at back accidents from Maverick. Wait, wait, okay. wait, 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 wait. Swift wouldn't bring you on? Swift wouldn't take me. It was that bad, yes. Yeah. Swift, Swift take me. we we talking about Swift, yeah. Swift Night of Arizona. They wouldn't take you on. <laughs> no, because because I had I had way too many uh, back accidents for the criteria, and it was too close together in the time period. Now, so with, now let's time. let's back up a minute. You 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 got these back in accidents with uh with yeah. with Maverick, Maverick. right? Yeah, and you yeah. mentioned you 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 just mentioned four of them. Like, was yeah. they like serious accidents or was it just incidents? No. Um. Well, they have it on there as accidents slash incidents. They don't even specify. Like, I, I actually requested a copy of my deck after this was assigned me, and I was like, "Well, I need a copy of my deck." And the good thing with hirewrite dot com now is you're that able they to actually get that. Send it to your, your email now. Yeah, they don't. They, you don't have to. You don't have, you don't have to get in the mail anymore. They just send it to my email. I'm like, okay, perfect. So, um, I actually got a copy of it, and it just says back and back and back and back. And it doesn't give you a description. Uh, it doesn't specify whether it was an accident or an incident. Um, they kind of logged in, well, as accidents in their internal system. But basically, what it was was just you know misjudgments. You know, nothing. I think, yeah, one actually involved another tractor while I was uh, backing up into a space. Mm -hmm. um, I, I bumped into the driver's uh, step. But it's so crazy because as I was basically telling myself to the safety department, he was like, okay, let's exchange licenses. Um, he was like, well, how do you want to handle it? And I'm like, well, you said like, exchange licenses. He was like, okay, yeah, but if you give me some money, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just let you buy bonds. Yeah, he was nah. on that shit. I'm nah, like, okay. Nah, nah, nah. You... Nah, bro, it's a company truck. You, 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 you can't exactly. do that. Exactly. You can't do that, man. That's you had to. Was you he had was to. You had to. You, you had to exchange licenses and insurance. That's what happened to me with, uh, with my little incident over in, uh, what was that, Joplin? No, not Joplin, but it was, it was a uh, Oak Oak Seventy where the truck, you know, ran into me and the and the dude over the phone wanted me to. Well, we we could do this the money way, and I was like, "Bro, this ain't my truck. This, this ain't my truck. This this a company truck." So, so exactly, for, yeah. So, so four accidents with uh, and that's unfortunately that's will fall in the first year, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, that that could be that could be a damper on on a lot of uh on a lot of companies they look at that because you're not supposed and to have, have you're not supposed to have like no more they'll, they'll let you slide with at least two but like yeah you know, three four five six or more yeah they're gonna they're gonna want you to the to, to put in some time hopefully with a, with the next company or something like that mm -hmm. that'll give you the opportunity to drive and you can you know succeed on um on on some of those incidents that drops off so you're on the phone with the recruiter at a at a yeah. ptl and yeah. you know she she sugar coat she she sugar coats everything to you uh what 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 was the uh situation like between you and her and what happened oh my god it was it was so promising at first because i'm like yo look i'm not even gonna game you right now this is what's on my dad report this this is what's in my driver's history. Can y'all work with me, or is it like a situation where it's like I don't meet the criteria? She was like, okay, well, honestly, what I can do, um, if, if worst comes to worst, she was saying that if worst came to worst, I would just go through a refresher course with a trainer on the week. 
right. you know, practicing on my back end and then doing the road test and maybe being out with some loads, of, you know, doing some loads with him or her. And uh, I was like, okay, cool. So then basically she gets me called back to set me up for orientation all quick and shit. Mm-hmm. And so I head up there and I'm, I'm thinking I'm good. Like, okay, you know, okay. The most I'm going to do is a refresher course. They didn't say anything about a refresher course when I did orientation. I just was doing my thing. Right. So, I mean, I, I did their road test. I passed their road test. I was doing all the preliminary stuff, you know, looking at their insurance, which, by the way, was crazy high. But anyway, um, and then I get a, and then I get my name called at the door, like, "Hey, uh, are you Corey?" And I'm like, "Yeah." They were like, "Well, can you come? Can you come to my office, please?" And I'm like, "Okay." So then the lady who was in charge of like, you know, uh, the recruiting, not recruiting, but uh, orientation. She sits me down and she's like, okay, well, let me wait until this other person gets in here. And the other person was like one of the instructors for orientation. Right. They basically sat me down and told me that they were sending me home because uh, they found this on my dashboard. I'm like, wait a minute. That doesn't sound right because the, my recruiter said it was okay. She was like, yeah, well, um, it's just a little too much. And, we, you know, it just it just lets one accident here. And I'm like, I put down four. She's like, oh, well, I only see one here. But um, our background team sounds for it. It's funny how that works. I'm like, no, it's not funny because that's what I put on my application. Right. You and didn't so, want to. You you didn't want to. Uh, you you didn't want none of that to come back. But obviously it did. Hell no. So what? They gonna find it anyway. So why lie? You know. So the so the recruiter. Uh, you said in your video that the recruiter just put down the one incident, but you told your recruiter that it was four. Yes, I told her it was four, and you know they use damn Intella app. So Intella app, you can just—it's a one-stop shop. You put down some shit once, and then you, you just you know verify your phone number, and then you keep on doing the same thing: copy and paste, copy and paste. Right. That's what I was doing. So my Intella app have application has all the accidents on there. Like I'm not lying about shit. Right. So it was just and then and then on top of that, like the accident that they received on their application when they finally got back to them and they pulled me in the office, mm-hmm. it was from a date that I wasn't even like driving. That, well, better yet, that I wasn't even, I didn't even have any accidents. As a matter of fact, on the 7th of July, which, went, which is when they said that, which is when the application said that I had one accident that the recruiter made up and put in there, mm-hmm. I was on damn family vacation and I was on, I was in training still. So I got out of training, went on a family vacation for a week and got back and started driving officially, like, you know, early August. So she, she, she just basically made some shit up. And I was like, well, y'all need to get your recruiting department together. Then the orientation lady was like, honestly, you're not telling me anything I don't know already. I mean, but at the end of the day, it ain't even our department. You know, that's the crazy part, right? That that is so crazy that uh, that that the recruiting that the recruiting department with some of these companies don't mesh well with the orientation people because what the recruiting people tells you, what the recruiting people tells you is the they they sugarcoat it to get you in to the orientation and they get yeah. uh, and and commission and with some with some of these companies of course they get a commission so yeah. with that with that said she what she did was okay you got four maybe i could squeeze you in with one then i get you into the orientation and then from the orientation, I'll, I'll let them take over from orientation because I already got Pretty my much. bonus. I already got my bonus. For yeah, me. that's how she played that shit. Damn. And it's so funny because I called her back and I, I called her out on it. I'm like, yo, I put, you, you put this one accident there. And meanwhile, I put four down on application, but they're only receiving the one accident that you put on there. Why are you lying on my application? She's like, oh, oh, um, well, uh, you know, just none the wise. She was acting mad dumb. She was like, okay, well. Oh, you mean those accidents that through the three that weren't your fault and the one that was? I'm like, now you're just talking out of your ass because I put it down as all my fault. I was being real honest. She's like, oh, well, let me call you back. And she calls me back and she's like, well, unfortunately, I was overruled. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, bruh, mm-hmm. that's crazy because I spent all this time and money trying to get up here. And yet you're the, you know, yet, you know, you have no consideration over that. Like, that's, that's the thing. She's like, it's, all she said was, I wish that I could tell you something different outside of I'm sorry, but I can't. Wow. So what I did was, yeah, it's crazy. I, I actually got in contact with the head of recruiting for PTL, explained the whole situation to him. He was none the wiser. And he looked at my application, he was like, dude, if I would have seen this, I would have even wasted your time. Like, exactly. who's this recruiter? And I thought, yeah, it was crazy. So I told him the name of the recruiter, and basically, he, he was basically like, well, I can assure you that 
it won't end well for somebody in the situation. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Well, you so, know what? You know, it pro- you, you know what? He probably might just be saying. He probably might just be saying all that just to just to make you feel that's good. That's true. Man. You know because so you know true. he. You know, it, he would like I said this this recruiter right here probably was a new recruiter that's that probably mm-hmm. only been with the company for like six months or or less than a year, and maybe she mm. you know maybe you know she knew she knew how to how to work the system as as far as making it uh, making it better for her by by you coming yeah. in by you coming in uh, by you coming in. She already got her bonus. Would anything after that, yep. anything after that, don't have nothing to do with the recruiting no more. So that's mm. that is that is so crazy that you uh, that you had that situation uh, with uh, PTL, man. That's yeah, but uh, that but crazy. that's what these but that's what these recruiters do. You gotta you gotta sometimes read between the lines of of what the recruiters say versus what you're gonna actually find out when you. Uh, get in there man all right so uh so what made you become uh what made you become a truck driver man um really i have done like i've, I've been to college i was looking at getting in the military i was looking at getting in like a like a trade like you know an electrician or a plumber i was basically i basically was just all over the place and i'm like man None of this shit is working out. A lot of this shit costs some money to start. I don't have any money to give. Like, what can I possibly do? Because I'm getting older. Like, I'll be 30 in a few years, and I, I, I don't want to just be still trying to figure it out. So um, my best friend, he actually has been driving trucks for, like, two years now. And he started around the time that I lived with him. And he was just, for the longest time, he like, well, why don't you see me and drive a truck? And I'm just like, man, I don't want to do that shit. Like, you seem like you're always working and blah 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 blah. You know, just like, excuses. And I was like, well, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna be the best server at a restaurant in my in, in my life. Like, I'm gonna make thousands of dollars uh, every month. You know, I was just basically putting it off and just trying to do it my own way. But my own way wasn't making no damn money. So finally, I just kind of gave in. It was just like, man, you know what? Like, I can just try it. Uh, it seems like the most sensible thing to do. And plus. To be to be honest with you, I got man. Um, I I really liked uh, the 420, and it was hard for me to let go of that. But once I did, it was like okay. Now I'm <laughs> yeah. Now you I you have to yeah. When you're coming experience. into this game, man. I mean, you know, you you could probably you could probably still 420 it, but yeah, you you got to understand that sometimes that uh it stays in your system, and you mm-hmm. know they they do these uh you know they do these hair follicle tests and these uh, yeah. And these uh, drug tests, man, that you you can't get around it no more. You can't get around it. So if you wanna if you wanna stay focused in this game, man, yeah, you gotta gotta leave that 420 alone. If as you know, exactly. Why, why you in this game, man? All right. So you Absolutely. you on a you on a Greyhound right now, man. So uh, where where you I'm heading to? Where you heading to right now? Who 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 picked you I, up, man? I am. I'm heading to an orientation for a new company. I, I, I actually told my subscribers that I don't want to reveal it yet. No, no, no problem. That's cool. That's cool. Right but, but this um, this new company, company this new company is giving you a chance with with your background. Yes, I was very clear on what it was, and you know, before I, I told it the situation I got in with PCL. Like, oh, are you talking about the four bag units? Oh, whatever. So it's one of those companies, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. It ain't going to be the best company in the world, but right. it's somebody that will let me get behind that truck. And, at you know, least, give at least truck. give you a chance. And and right now you're on a Greyhound. <clears throat> yes, I am. Yeah. Wanna, so how? So without going into in the detail to you know who you're going to, how how long is the bus uh, the bus ride from from Atlanta to where well, you're going to? To where I'm going to is only like four hours. I'm very close. to I'm gonna be some. I'm gonna be in Tennessee, and you know, okay. Georgia and Tennessee are neighbors, so it's not that bad of a bus ride. <laughs> oh, okay, That's why okay. I'm, I'm over here chilling. Okay, so you are you almost there? How how many hours you you into the ride now? Um, it's been about shit, including this podcast, about a whole hour. About uh, um, about so a half, like three hours left. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there is there anybody else on the bus that's that's going with you to the same company? I haven't met anybody yet. There could be. Um, I, I'm probably just overlooking them right now, but I, I don't know. I, 
I haven't met anybody else that's that's going to the same company as me. Okay, 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 okay. Well, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, hey, listen, yeah. I, you know, hey, I, I appreciate you, uh, you uh, reaching out to me, man. You know, telling, yeah. telling your experience and sharing. I mean, sharing your experience with us, man. Hey, so Word. is there is there anything that you like to anything any tips or any advice that you like to say for some new jacks out here? What they what they can be uh, looking for? Okay, yeah, I'm going to sound like a broken record because I know a lot of other people who've been on this podcast have said the same thing. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Be patient. Do not rush into this. Make sure, like, you know, don't don't be so, like, careful as to not do anything or as to take too long, like, deciding what company you want to go to. But really, like, do your research. Make sure that you're going into this just for, you know, for the experience, not just for, the, not just for what you get paid. Because, yeah, it would be nice to make this, that, and a third of a mile, and yeah, you might be up to the challenge, but sometimes you don't know what you're getting into or what the cost is for making that much money starting out. Like, for example, when I went to Maverick, oh, I was like, oh, 50, 50 miles, but I didn't know the cost of doing flatbed until I got into it. So right. make sure you do your research and kind of like, you know, ask yourself, like, what can I realistically handle? If I'm not trying to, like, think too hard on things and daydream about how much money I'm going to make, what can I actually handle and then take it from there? Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So yeah. let me uh, go ahead and uh, pump your. Let me let me bring this back up again. Go ahead and uh, pump your channel. Uh, let me see if I can uh, find it. Let me see. There we go. All right, there you go. You can find my man Karaji. The what's that? Experimental. Experimental. Yeah, Karaji the experimental. I'm thinking of changing that because. That's some shit I used to go by when I was in high school, and it, it just sucked. But where, yeah, for now, it's Karaji the Experimental, yeah. Yeah, where, where you get your, where the name come from, bro? Karaji, I kind of like um, that. It, it, it's literally like a combination of my first name and last name. My, my first name, middle initial, and last name. Oh, okay, that's what's up, man. That sounds like a cool-ass rapper name, too, Karaji. Man, it's, it's funny you said that, because I, I actually do music, too. I make beats, I write songs, I do music. Okay. And literally, I, um, I got into truck because not only do I want to, like, make my financial, see my financial goals, but I want to fund this music career, like... Being yeah, in the music can, industry is expensive as hell. You can so, use you, you can know. use this, you know, if you if you do it right, you can use this to save up for for, you know, other goals in life. You know what I'm saying? You don't never yeah, you don't have to always, you know, be in this truck, but definitely you can use it you can use this as a stepping stone for another goal that you can uh that you can get into, man. Uh how these uh people can find you, man? I'm you know, your Instagram Yes, I'm on Instagram. I'm on a Twitter that I never use. I'm on a Snapchat that I never use. And that is all Karaji411. That is C O R A G E E 411. All right. Yeah, I got your uh, I got your Instagram up right quick. So you guys could check them out on yes. Instagram at uh, Karaji411. And then you could definitely check them out on his uh, YouTube page, uh, Karaji, of course. Uh, Karaji the uh, Experimental. And um, yeah. with uh, with this last question that I like to let me see if I can bring it up with this last question that I like to ask all my guests, man, before you get up out of here, what's more important, man, truth or happiness? Wait, can I say that one more time. I said, what's more important, truth or happiness? Uh, I would say truth because sometimes ha happiness can uh, lie to you to make you, to keep you happy. All right, that's what's up. That, that's what's yeah. up, man. That's what's up. Well, Karaji, man, I appreciate the reach out, man. Definitely, you're part of the uh, LOM community, man. So definitely, don't be no yes, stranger. Sir. You know what I'm saying? No, Make sir. sure you get to uh, yeah. get to your to your uh, next trucking adventure safe, man. I see you right now. You on yes. that that Greyhound, right quick? And uh, I am. And uh, definitely, uh, be safe out there, bro. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're very welcome, man. You're very welcome. You stay safe and you have a blessed one. You too. Thank you. All right. All right. You're have welcome. a good one, guys. I appreciate it. That was Karaji. Karaji the Experimental on uh, on the podcast tonight. Uh, if you guys want to come on the podcast, y'all can reach out to me. Y'all can hit me up in the Gmail, lockoutmen at gmail.com. Well, not lockoutmen at gmail.com. It's lockoutmenpodcast.com. 
at gmail.com. So if you guys want to come on the show and holler at me and tell me your experience, get it out there for the people to know, I would I would love to hear what you got to say. Yo, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys listening. You can listen to the podcast on all of the podcast platforms. And, of course, you got me right here on YouTube. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. And, yo, look at the T-shirt. Look at the T-shirt. Y'all see how, you, you see who I'm rocking? You see who I'm rocking? The Texas. Yes. I got this, uh, I got this sweet-ass T-shirt. Shout out to uh, One Deep Clothing. I got this sweet-ass uh, Texas T-shirt uh, down at the uh, mall that I was in. And what well, actually, that I actually got is because it got my man Screw, DJ Screw, rest in peace. So if you guys is into that screw music like I am, yo, make sure you check out One Deep Clothing. All right, that's it for me. That's it for Karaji. Make sure you guys go and check him out on his uh on his uh YouTube and his Instagram. I am Lockout Man, and I'll come back at you again in another video. Peace. Oh, wait a minute. Did I do the right one? I think I did the right one. I got to make sure I did the right one. Yeah, I did the right one. All right, I'm out of here. Y'all take it easy. Peace.